this video, in this video, we're going to talk about sessions. So the interaction between the client and the server is stateless, meaning that if you were to send a request to the server, the server is not going to know who you are. Even if you send another request immediately after the first request, it's not going to know that you had just sent a request. So that's where cookies come in. If we send a request with a cookie on it, the server is going to be able to identify who we are. And this is going to allow the server to create a session. A session is a state between the client and the server where the server can identify who the client is. So this is going to allow the users to be able to click through several different pages, send several different requests, and the server is still going to know who they are. So to do this, we're going to use the Gorilla Web Toolkit, more particularly the Gorilla Sessions package. So there's several different uh, good packages here. Uh, for instance, uh, the Mux package uh, provides you with the multiplexer where, say, if you wanted handlers to handle the same path but, you know, different methods, one of them handle, you know, the get request at one path and then one to handle the post requests at that one path, you can actually separate them out into two different handlers, which can be pretty handy. Um, schema is pretty good if you want to uh, pull a lot of data and put it into a struct. But like I said, we're going to be using uh, Gorilla slash Sessions package. So if you click on that, it's going to go ahead and open up the GitHub repository. And a good place to start would be the doc.go. It's going to give you a lot of just general uh, examples to go by. Um, and you can look inside some of these other things as well. Um, if you wanted to look at what the store was, you can, you can see that as well. You know, it's an interface. Uh, if you want to see what the option, you know, the different options uh, for you know, struct for your cookies, you could look at that. You could look at what a session is. Um, but anyway, you can just kind of uh, mosey through all these different ones or what their particular cookie, for instance, would would look like. But anyway, let's go ahead and get back uh, to our application. So here we're at uh, slash create, and we already have a session cookie. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. And our application setup is if we don't have a session already, we're going to go ahead and create a new one, and it's just called session name, and here's our value. And if I wanted to put a value in there, let's put John, we're able to pull that value and even you know, use it for our templates if we want to, like we are, we are here. And let's say if I want to delete it, I got a path for that. And it's just going to go ahead and delete the cookies. Let's, uh, let's take a look at our code and see how that works. So this is not intended for production use in any way. This is oversimplified. There's no authentication going on here. Uh, this is just to kind of show how the working pieces fit together. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead inside the sessions package. Now, if you don't have this package, use the go get command and then this address. But we're going to use that to, we're going to use the sessions package and we're going to use the new cookie store function and we're going to use that to return a pointer to a cookie store. Now, our key pairs, this needs to be a slice of, slice of bytes. So we're, using a, we're converting it to a slice of bytes. And obviously, you wouldn't use something that's easily guessed. You would want something, um, obviously, a much more random as well. It, they, give pretty, they give good advice that it, if this was in production, you wouldn't want your password right here in your source code. It would be a risk of where it could leak out. Uh, more than anything, you'd want to make sure their, their example's a lot better, you know, just pulling it from a, a system variable, an environmental variable would be a lot better. So you could pass the code around, people could modify it, but they wouldn't necessarily know what that environmental variable 
would be on that particular machine that you're running the server on. Uh, anyway, now one thing to be aware of is this context clear handler. If you're not running the Gorilla Mux package, which as you can see, we're not running it here, we need to have this piece of code here to avoid a memory leak. This is going to make sure that all of our resources are properly closed up. One little caveat with the package. If you are, you are using the Gorilla Mux package, then you don't have to have that. But just as a heads up, you do need to have this or else you're just going to be leaking memory. We got three different paths here. We have slash create, slash delete, and slash about. And the slash create is going to go ahead and create our cookie. So we're going to go ahead and use our cookie store, which we created up here, and we're going to use the get method. And it's going to take our request and the name of this particular session. This one we're just calling session name. Name it something more original. And it's going to return a session and an error. And if we do get an error, we want to go ahead and let them know, like let them know the status that yeah, something obviously went wrong. Now on this session, um, right here we have the defaults, but on the sessions it's a struct. It has an options. Uh, I'm sorry, the sessions has a field called options, which is a struct. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here we go, our session struct. ID string, values, and it has options. And the options is a struct. Let's see where I have options. Okay, there's options. The path, a domain, a max age, a secure, an HTTP only. So these are the defaults. Um, there's 86,400 seconds in a day by seven. So they're just saying, hey, this is good for a week. Um, Let's go ahead and change it to five seconds. Back to create. There we go. So here's our cookie. Now, if you want to see this expire, make sure you use this refresh and not that refresh. Because this one is going to check if there's not one there. We have the code created where it's going to create a new session. This one's just going to check without refreshing the page. It's just going to refresh these. So, yep, five seconds has uh, has gone by. So now our cookie has been deleted. So let's go ahead and set that max age back to a week. And we're going to go ahead and parse our form, and we're going to go ahead and pull our form value with the name of name, and save that into a variable name name, and we're checking if it is not empty. So if, if we have a value that we're pulling from our form, we want to go ahead and take that value and we want to assign it to in the session.values. Now session.values, that is a map. So I'm printing off sessions right here. As you can see, that dot values is a map. So if you put a value in there, uh, notice that last time we ran it, it didn't have a value in there. So let's actually, uh, let's put one in there. Let's go Carl. There we go. So our map, it only has one key value pair, you know, key of name and value of Carl, but it's there. So you could put several different key value pairs in there. Um, Another thing to mention as well, when we created our, our session up here, you can create several sessions. We're just creating one in this example. So taking a look at it, I mean, we only have one session, but you could actually have multiple sessions if you wanted to. And like I said, you can adjust Let's get down here. Now make sure that you run the session.save and that you run it before you execute your template. So this is just going to go ahead and, and save the values or whatever values we may have changed. And if there's an error, we want to go ahead and you know, pass on that status. And, but if everything's fine, we want to go ahead and execute our template with our parse create.html file. And we want to go ahead and pass in name. So if we do have a value, 
we will see this and we will go ahead and display display that name now our other function our delete handler is is that slash delete our delete handler will run and that's where we are deleting that cookie so this is going to be a lot that session so this is going to be a lot like how you would delete a regular one as well so we're going to use the store dot get method again and it's going to return our our session now remember that store is our you know it's well, like I said I mentioned it is a file system you know our cookie store and it has access to that method but anyway we're going to be looking for a session by the name of session name we're going to go ahead and return that session and if there isn't one it's going to go ahead and create a new one for us and just like before our session under the options field remember that that is a struct and it has a max age field on that struct just like a cookie we're just going to go ahead and put this to a negative one so when we go ahead and run session.save that cookie is going to go ahead and be deleted so as you can see here there we go and it is deleted and as you can see our map it's just empty we don't have any key value errors in there so in review uh, just go ahead and create your cookie store which you're going to save your sessions in um, use that store and use the method on it to go ahead and create your sessions create your session and then you know modify that session you know however you might want it to be and yeah and remember that session dot values is a map so you just give it a key and you can use that you know give a key to that map and just pass in your value like you usually would and then of course make sure you run session dot save you know before you run you execute your template and of course uh, we're getting our session the same way as we did above and we're going to go ahead and set the session options max age to a negative one so that way when we save it it's going to go ahead and delete uh, expire that cookie so anyway like i said we're not covering any authentication um, we will go over actually uh, log in and log out uh, videos in the future and even a, a registration uh, video as well but anyway if you like the content uh, please like and subscribe um, every little bit is that helps uh, most of my content I have a, a lot of you uh, most of my viewers aren't subscribed so uh, if you do subscribe it really does help me out quite a bit so I appreciate that but I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one